In this video, we are going to go ahead and we're set up a basic particle so that way you can see when you hit or when you miss something. So the first thing we want to actually do is turn off our line trace. And we're going to do this just so we don't forget later because that tends to happen. So let's figure out where our line trace is. Here we go. And we're going to go ahead and turn off our debug type to none. Now if we were to go ahead and fire and test, you're actually going to see nothing happen. Our items will still react and they'll still get destroyed and our points will still go up. But we have no way of knowing where we actually fired at. It's just a really good guess. But to solve that, we are going to make a particle. So let's go ahead and close down our engine content again. And let's make a new folder called particles. And let's make our first particle. We'll go under particle system and we'll call this one the hit particle. Now the nice thing about this is it should be really simple to implement and it's going to give us a basic nice little effect. If we open up the particle we're really not going to see anything and that's because by default your particle doesn't really have anything to show. It has no particle assigned to it, no material. What we need to do is create a material and it'll be a very simple material and then we're going to display it and alter it over time. Let's go to materials. We're going to go ahead and create a new material and we'll call this the particle mat. And that was probably a silly name. What do we call this one? Hit particle? So we'll call this one the hit particle mat. This will give us our hit particle material. Now the particles Inside of your particle itself, you have options, color, velocity, sizes, but the color is the big one. Now the color you set in here, the alpha and the color, it's both of them, can be passed along to the material itself. In order to do that, we type in particle color. And we will get the particle color node. Now one thing that's important to do here is plug our particle color into a missive and then plug our alpha into the opacity. If you don't plug your alpha into the opacity, it's not going to have an opacity. The alpha value you set in here is not going to affect the particle itself. Now, we need to actually enable this by going into the blend mode and setting it to translucent. And then one thing we might so might want to do is set on two-sided just so that way, no matter where it's at, we can go ahead and see it. Uh, you, know what, you know what? Actually, we're going to undo two-sided, since we know we're really only going to see it from one side, since we're not really going to move much. But change our shading model to unlit. Since we're not using any lights in our scene, let's make sure we set this to unlit, so that way it's actually visible at all times. So with those changes, particle plug, particle color plugged in, and a translucent unlit shady model. We're done with our, our material. Opening back up our particle, if you don't have it open, we're going to go ahead and go to required and we're going to assign particle we, the material for the particle we just created, which is hit particle material. And you'll notice here we really can't see much and that's because of a few different things, sizes and things like that. If you don't see anything or you don't know where it's at, or it still may be compiling, just hit the F or focus key, and that's going to go ahead and let you focus in on our particle. And here's our particle here. Now it looks a bit more like steam, and we'll adjust that. The first thing is our size. Our size is way too big. So let's go to the initial size, open up start size, and we'll find the maximum and the min. Let's set our max to something like 3, and let's set our min to something like 1. And that's going to give us something that's a little bit better for what we're looking for. Now, one thing you might want to do is adjust this based on what it's going to look like for your actual particle. If we're looking at this, we are noticing these are kind of tiny. And if we were to put them in the scene right now, we'd probably think, wow, those are kind of tiny. With VR, because you don't have a, a super high resolution display and some things can be far away, you might want to exaggerate. So let's actually bump this up. Let's actually click on the particle 
Let's go for something like 10 and 7. And that's going to give us a much bigger hit effect. Now the next thing that we're going to deal with is the lifetime. Basically, how long are these alive for? If we go to the lifetime now and open it up, we'll find they're allowed to live for one second. No matter what, it's pretty much a constant. Let's change that. 0.4 for the minimum, 0.6 for the maximum. What you'll notice is we now have a much smaller smoke trail. And we actually have a few that are popping up away from the rest rather than all of them. Now, as we're watching this, we're thinking to ourselves, well, this is like smoke. It's not really a hit. There's no burst. Well, that's because our lifetime is basically set to infinite. And that's because of the amount of loops that we have set up. So if we go to our required, and we scroll down here to duration emitter loops, we want to change this to 1. And you'll notice now it's basically spawning, and then down here it's saying complete. We need to obviously adjust our settings in terms of how often it's spawning, but that's what we're going to work on now. So go back to required, emitter duration, and change this to 0 0.2. And there you go. You'll notice it's poof. It's a little poof, and it stops. So for 0 0.2 seconds, it's emitting, and then it's going to stop. And it's only going to do it once until it's done. So the next thing we want to worry about is there's not enough of them. It's just this little puff. And that's going to be our spawn rate. So if we go into our spawn, we go into our rate, and we look right here, it's only 20. Let's bump this up to 100. And there we go. We have a little poof. Now, a traditional bullet would probably last significantly less. But this is a VR game, and we take a little bit of license with how we want it to do. We want to give the person a little bit more of a visual feedback that they can notice easier. It's to help the player. You want to allow the player to feel like when they missed, it wasn't because the game was cheating. It was because, oh, I noticed that I shot too slow behind the target and I need to adjust. We give it a nice effect. And one thing left I want to do is change our color. We have two different things here. We have color over life and alpha over life. We adjust it by our color over life section. Now alpha over life, we're perfectly fine with. If I was to open this up, what we're gonna find here is in the beginning, the zero value or zero percent, it's gonna have 100% alpha. You'll be able to see it. At the one position or 100%, it's gonna go to zero or fade out. So our alpha is good, we're gonna leave that alone. What we want to do is the same exact thing we just saw, our zero value and our one value, 0%, 100%, and we're going to change our out value to black. We'll go ahead and hit OK, and what you'll notice here is they're now fading out to a black color as they go. So we get a little bit more of a fading effect and a little bit more of a puffing effect. And honestly, that's going to be it. That is going to be our particle. If we were to find our particle and drag it into our scene and zoom in on it, you're actually not going to be able to see much here because the particle will not continually... Uh, there we go. There we go. And that's what we're going to see. We're going to see this little effect, uh, which is the pain in the butt to see through the item. But that's what our hit's going to look like. And it's going to look a lot different once we put it in. Now we need to actually spawn our hit. And this is, again, really easily done. We already have our player, and our player already is hitting something. And based on that, the something is responding. Now, there's two ways we can handle it. If we were to go into a player and add in our particle effect into our player when it shoots, it's going to have the particle effect on everything. If we add the particle effect to what we hit, our enemy, for example, is only going to show on the enemy. Since we want this to be a vis visual representation of what we hit, we're going to put it in the player, in the line trace. And we're going to make it where every time we shoot something, as long as we hit something, it's going to spawn an emitter. So let's make a little bit of room here. Now I'm using the arrow keys to move this to the right, so that way it stays uniform. And we're going to do a spawn emitter. Emitter. 
And we're going to do it at the location because, well, we're going to want to do it where we hit. So spawn emitter at location, we're going to need to plug in the emitter template, which is our particle. And we're going to need to determine where and how it looks. So let's start with the where first. Well, this one is really, really simple. There's two options here, really, the location and the impact point. Based on the target of the surface, the impact point, if you have a non-flat surface, in our case, our spheres, the impact point is going to give us a better result. So we're going to use our impact point as the location. And actually, if we were to go in here now and we hit play and we were to find our gun and turn it back on yet again and start firing, you're going to see, well, let's fire down, we're going to see a hit. And you can see our little effect every time we hit. And if we were to actually hit the gun, bullet, the sphere, you'd see it. And you can see it all the way over there. Now here's something I want to do. When we hit the ground, because the ground is flat, the particle is projecting up and it's firing off in the Z direction, the opposite of the ground. And that's cut. that's what you would expect. But when we hit the wall, you'll notice it's going up as well. If we were to hit the ceiling, actually you're barely going to be able to see it because it's going to go ahead and go up as well. When we hit a sphere, it's actually going to react and always go up, and that's kind of not what we want. We want it to kind of look maybe more like you hit your target and it pops out whatever you were hitting. So we get a little smoke effect in the reverse direction of what we hit. And the nice thing is that's super simple. We have our impact normal. This is where we hit. This is the normal, or basically the outward direction of what we hit. On the ground, our normal is going to be our Z up on this one. On this wall, our normal is going to still be the Z. That's one of the keys. The normal is always going to have a Z in the positive direction for the outwards. So in this one, the outward normal is going to face that way. Basically, as I'm going through it, for the ground, it's going to face up. For up, it's going to phase down. And all that matters is your normal direction is going to be Z positive. So what we do is we take our normal and we make a rotation from Z and we plug that into our rotation. So what it's going to do is basically take the Z value of our impact normal, make a rotation from it, and then we'll plug it into our spawn emitter. Go ahead and test this again. We'll try firing blindly at stuff. And you'll notice now when we hit the ground, it fires up. If we hit the ceiling, it's going to fire down. And if we hit the wall, it's going to fire towards us. And then if I were to hit the sphere, which is here, somewhere. I'm hitting behind it because I can't friggin' aim this way. Anyways, if we were to hit the sphere, which I'm having serious difficulties doing right now. Why am I having difficulties hitting the sphere? Did I not hook something back up? That's a very good question. No, everything should still be good. Let me move that actor closer. We might have broken something. That is definitely possible. Okay, let's try this again. It certainly seems like we're hitting. but our object is not being destroyed anymore. So let's see if we can figure that out, shall we? So when we hit something, we hit true. All we did here was intersect a spawn emitter. So if we were to unhook our spawn emitter and play this again, did we accidentally? No, no, we, we hit it. So our emitter spawning is causing an issue here. That is very, very interesting. Let's go ahead and set this back up to spawn. Go ahead and hit play again. We'll see where our, oh, never mind. So either I'm horrible at shooting or I accidentally just simply didn't plug something in. Let's save and compile again. Shoot the walls, shoot under target. Oh, I, I think I know what the issue is. 
Yeah, th this thing. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I'm 96% sure I know what the problem is. Let's find our enemy spawner and edit it. Let's find our root for our spawner. Here we go. And that's set there. And that is set there. So one issue we're having here is for whatever reason, let's move this into the wall and double check our issues here. Let's move it right into the wall and see if it spawns properly. And it is. Let's move it on the other side. And let's move this through the wall. Okay, so that is spawning properly. I think the issue was it was too close to me. I lost my controller. There it is. No, we just, there we go. It's, oh my gosh. It is an issue with me simply trying to fire behind me and not being able to hit it properly. It's what it is. We're going to aim it over there. I just, I am horrible. There we go. See, yeah. So it's just an issue of the fact that I simply cannot aim worth a damn backwards behind me. So what looked like a bug is not actually a bug. Let's just go back and double check. Make sure everything's spawning. Spawning properly, spawn, ignore collisions. Let's go into our enemy itself. This is just a double check. Make sure our sphere is set with the proper things. Yeah, everything is set fine. Okay, so that was just a weird issue. We have gone ahead and we have set up our particle and our particle works properly. Now that we have a target we can hit, we have scores, we have particles. Let's turn this more into a game. We're going to finish up our enemy spawners. Our enemy spawners are now going to spawn an enemy. That enemy is going to then fly across the screen as we have a target to track and shoot. And then it's going to destroy itself after a certain amount of time. And of course, this is all going to work with our score system automatically. Then we'll slap in a couple things such as the ability to change the speed at random based on our spawner. And the ability for a um, timer to repeatedly fire off enemies for testing purposes.